Hey, this is OBD11 next generation and before I will show you this device I just want to quickly say that uh, I got this, got this for free but they are not paying me for doing this test and review so just a quick disclaimer and I have to say that I'm pretty excited about this one um, I have the previous generation and very happy with it and uh, this one has some upgraded uh, hardware which will allow us to use uh, iOS devices with it. The old one use, uh, used uh, Bluetooth 2.0 which was not supported by uh, iPhones. And the other cool thing that with future updates this should support uh, other brands like BMW. Right now it's not available but uh, maybe someday we will see. Okay so uh, let's check, let's check what's in the box. It's a really small box with a really small user manual and the device is over here with a key ring that you will most likely use to remove this from the OBD2 port because sometimes it can be hard to grab it firmly to remove it. So you have this to do it. Let me just let me just show you how really how small this really is. So here I have a case with a diagnostic interface. He's, here's the uh, smallest handheld OBD2 scanner that I could find. Here's a uh, traditional Bluetooth uh, dongle for uh, OBD diagnostic. Here's my Golf Max 7 car key. And here's the device. So this is how small it is. Okay, so let's uh, check it out in car. Let's connect it to OBD2 port in Golf Max 7 and let's check what can we do with it. Okay, so it's connected, ignition is on, and let's check if it will work with iPhone. Mm, let's connect. Instantly the device is on the list, so let's try to connect, and right away we can see that there's a firmware update available. It's important to do this before we go any further, just to make sure that uh, we have the latest and greatest uh, versions of the firmware for both the application and the device itself. So let's update it. Firmware update took a few seconds and right now I'm ready to connect with the car. So I need to enter my password. Okay, it knows that it's my Volkswagen Golf. It checks a few things and after that we'll be ready to perform full, full scan of the system. Oh my God. It's connected, I believe, because the radio just um, turned on for a split second. Okay, so let's tap to scan. And it will go through all the modules installed in the car. It's already in the fourth one. And we can uh, see that there's uh, at least one fault at this moment. It's not unusual to have faults in your car, so don't be afraid if there's one or two or even five. Um, because uh, modern cars will report a lot of things uh, um, that are wrong with the car, including broken bulbs or low battery in your key. So let's uh, let's wait a few more seconds uh, um, until the scan is completed, and then we will check what are the faults related to. And the scan is done. We have seven problems found. We can swipe up to clear the faults. We can swipe down to rescan the car, or we can go over here where we have all the modules on a list with a green or red indicator um, that will say, say us that there's a fault. So let's check what's wrong with the engine. Let's go to faults. And over here we can see that the cylinder for glow plug circuit is faulty. So most likely I have a glow plug that needs to be replaced. Over here, central electrics. Uh, we have remote 1, no basic settings, remote 2, no basic settings, and remote 2, voltage 2, low. And this threw me an, uh, an error on the instrument clusters. Uh, it said that the battery needs to be replaced. I've done um, battery replacement in both keys. So after that, both keys were, um, were um, disconnected from the car. Let's say they needed to be paired again. So this is why we have this fault, the faults that we can clear now if we want. Okay, so let's check what else is wrong with the car. Headlight regulation faults. Left stationary um, 
AFS, this is the um, uh, cornering light and uh, open circuit that's uh, basically a blown bulb that we need to replace good to know and driver assistance uh, it's the camera mounted over here for lane change and traffic sign recognition and uh, uh, other stuff so the fault is predictive road data signal error and it's over here two times and I know what it's what it is related to I have the traffic sign recognition over here and when I'm traveling on roads which are not yet on the navigation system because those are fresh roads or off roads and um, this can uh, throw me an error over here that something tra is, uh, traffic sign recognition is not available at the moment yada, yada, yada. it's because my camera sees a traffic sign but the navigation database it uh, thinks that we are off-road and there's a mis mismatch between the database of the navigation and what the camera sees. So that's uh, that's pretty much normal if you have uh, if you have uh, traffic sign recognition and your maps are not up to date. So right now we can uh, clear the code from this unit but we would have to um, do it again for all the other units that have some faults so instead we will swipe up and this will clear all, all the modules with faults and now we can tap to rescan just to confirm that all those faults are gone so after a few seconds and uh, we will see if um, uh, if all those faults are gone and even though we have zero problems right now i believe that tomorrow morning when i uh, perform a cold start on this car I will um, have the glow plug error again and of course the bulb needs to be replaced and unless it's replaced the error will come back here okay so we have the uh, diagnostic scan completed let's uh, try something else now let's check out those one-click applications we're going over here and we have a list of all the cool things that you want and need to enable in your car so let's check something that I don't have already, like the needle sweep. Okay, change value, it's currently off. Let's set it to on, activate, and it's done. As easy as that. It's as easy as changing your ringtone or your wallpaper in your phone. And right now, if we disconnect, cycle the ignition, I believe that we will uh, see the needle sweep when I turn the ignition back on. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so we have the fault scan and one click apps covered. So right now let's do something for, for pros. Let's go to the modules list and let's say that we want to enable the same needle sweep but we don't want to use one click app uh, which we have to pay for with credits but let's do it manually with long coding so we are going to dashboard module number 70 17 let's go to long coding let's find it it's called staging here let's set it to yes slide and new coding was sent to the instrument cluster we just we have just enabled this manually so you have uh, access to long coding over here same for adaptations we have all the adaptation channels over here if you want to adjust for example your uh, service reminders not only reset it but set it to new value for example you want shorter um, um, service intervals you can set it over here there's a lot a lot of settings over here that you can adjust and uh, keep in mind that this is meant <clears throat> this is meant for professionals so there's a lot of things over here that can uh, fix your car but also a lot of things that can break your car if you are not uh, uh, not paying attention <clears throat> also cool thing that there's a backup option so we can select things that we want we want to back up like like coding and adaptations let's press backup and you can see the progress bar over here the device is right now reading all the uh, all the things that we told the told it to do and after this we have a backed up backup coding at adaptation values for the instrument cluster so this is a recovery point for us if anything goes wrong so that was coding and adaptation right now let's check live data uh, maybe in engine module go to live data and since this is a 
diesel car we can check we can check dpf parameters so let's uh, type in particular particular filter and let's check something about the filter so maybe the ash load oil ash and suit mass measured and calculated done and over here we have live data about those four um those four um things that we just selected from the list okay and of course you can check live data about all the things that the engine control module provides so we can select coolant temperature engine speed intake egg temperature there's a lot of things fuel pressure and we have live data about those those things we can see that the coolant is 56 air intake is 54 engine is zero speed because the engine is off and the fuel pressure is zero because the engine is engine is off so these features will give you a nice inside look for uh, um, about the parameters of the engine and any other module that you want to check out live and this is very useful when troubleshooting issues with your car now let's switch to a different phone over here i have a, an android device and the application looks a little bit different there's a different graphic user interface but it's a different operating system with a different guidelines so that's okay and even though i'm not connected to the car yet i can already see my car's history and all the things that we have just done on the iphone a few minutes before all the dashboard coding or the diagnostic interface procedures so the full scan results are over here we can check the error code over here even though it was done with a different dev uh, device because all the data um, from the obd11 is synced on the server so even if you lose your phone and if you lose your device you can still uh, log in to your account to see all the things that have been done to your car so let's connect and over here also user interface looks a little bit different but we have all the same modules list over here we can perform all the same procedures so what else what's left if i want to cover all the things that you can do with obd11 this would be a two hour long um, video so we don't have time for that let's go to multimedia system which briefly turns on when i'm connecting to it and uh, let's perform maybe output test okay for uh for one second we we saw something on the uh, on the display let's do the same with instrument cluster for example so it's module 17 called dashboard over here let's go to uh, output test as soon as it's uh, connected output test and over here we can check check test picture in center display and we can see that the display is working this uh, has no timeout uh, counter so we have to stop it manually and it's done and of course there's a lot of different uh, different things that we can do there's eprom access uh, there's uh, security access there's output test basic settings and a lot a lot of other uh, other diagnostic advanced procedures that you can perform in your car now's the time for the easy removal tool great so this next generation device is really faster than the previous one you can see the difference performing a full scan it works on both ios and android phones there's no limit on how many cars you can connect it to i have about 20 cars uh, in my app history and uh, you can have as many as you want obd11 requires internet connection so you need a data plan or you need to be within your wi-fi range I highly recommend getting OBD11 if you have a Volkswagen, Audi, Seat or Skoda car. It will save you a lot of money on diagnostics and with the features that you can enable or retrofit in your car you will save thousands of dollars. 
Here in this uh, car I've already enabled uh, things like needle sweep, uh, folding mirrors, um, daytime running light settings, uh, wiper settings and off-road display and cool other things uh, which are not listed here but you can check my previous videos about them and this saved me a lot of, uh, a lot of cash. When it comes to price it's 77 bucks or 70 euros uh, for the uh, device itself or you can get it for 100 euros or 111 bucks with the pro license and some credits. Okay so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching, give me a thumbs up and uh, make a backup before changing anything in your car. See you soon.